So tonight's speaker, I don't think it needs a particular uh, introduction because uh, the work is uh, well, very well known and exciting. But uh, Ben van Berkel, that is uh, visiting us from Netherlands, is uh, director of UN Studio uh, together with Caroline Boss. And uh, basically, I just wanted to mention, I think it was 2002, when uh, Frederick Migaru, uh, who is a professor down here at Barford, um, organized this, uh, what I thought was very important exhibition, non-standard architecture in Paris at the Pompidou Center. And he um, chose 12 architects at the moment, I think. And uh, looking uh, retrospectively 10 years later, I think Ben is uh, the one that uh, we see is materializing the most, because that generation was very brave in a sense of, of picking up uh, certain very uh, progressive strands of research and looking into the whole title of non-standard uh, was coming from a non-standard analysis in, in mathematics. Um, and at the time, I remember, I think at that exhibition, UN Studio showed uh, Mobius House probably and Mercedes-Benz that was just a rendering still at the time. Um, and, and the idea of, of this kind of advanced topology that was very novel for architecture and, and the very great proposals. And, and I think Ben is the one that actually managed to uh, prove uh, lots of these concepts uh, through his work that I'm sure we'll see lots of that uh, tonight. And, and uh, in the 90s I, I remember some projects that were already uh, happening apart from Mobius House, there was an Erasmus Bridge, and, and, uh, and then the uh, Mercedes Museum in, in the 2005 6 I think, was completed. Very exciting building. But this idea of, of complex <coughs> topology was also um, the instrument to, to uh, synthesize or, or uh, bring together uh, not only exciting uh, formal geometries of, of architecture, but also incorporate certain virtual aspects, programmatic aspects, this kind of uh, other ghosts and agencies into this kind of complex synthesis uh, that uh, we will be seeing in some projects tonight. And at the moment, uh, UN Studio is everywhere on all parts of the globe, uh, doing uh, lots of projects, I think in China, in Singapore, um, there was a, a great uh, a pavilion a few years ago in, in New York, uh, uh, New Amsterdam pavilion. Uh, and um, uh, uh, apart from a professional work, Ben is always uh, also very active in academia and in the kind of uh, research and, and educating new generations of, of architects. So he's a director of uh, Städte Schule in, in uh, Frankfurt and also always uh, holding visiting positions in the past, maybe at uh, DAA, where he studied, uh, and also at uh, Columbia, Princeton, at the moment, uh, he's holding a chair, a cancer tongue chair at Harvard. Uh, so I really look forward to, and, uh, uh, to see the current work. I should also make another announcement that uh, immediately after this lecture, you should all migrate to Bates House, where we are having a, a kind of book launch by uh, Andrew Benjamin and uh, some drinks to celebrate. So we have uh, two exciting events tonight. Welcome. Thanks. Um, yes, good evening. Uh, thanks for, for, for this uh, wonderful introduction. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm always happy when, when there is more said about me than only two sentence, sentences. Um, because um, often, uh, often you might think that, uh, that, uh, that what is published and what is said uh, about a work is, is, is known and around. But but hopefully I still uh, um, keep myself uh, uh, alive with, uh, not only particularly with my teaching, but also with, with, uh, with the research we do in UN Studio. And for that reason, um, my talk is going to be an, a kind of reflective uh, talk. Uh, uh, not not uh, that I will talk to myself, but uh, 
and, 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 uh, and, and, and talk I would like to share with you with some open questions in it when, when particularly uh, when this title was uh, um, published as um, uh, yeah, how, how we could uh, uh, think differently about the future of uh, architecture. And, and the reason why I'm uh, fascinated uh, and been always for a long time fascinated in this topic is simply because uh, I've been in the practice for a long time, uh, now more than uh, 20 years, uh, I, I've discovered that, that constant the, the communication, the new techniques, the way how, how clients are all uh, um, changing. But in all these years I've, uh, I've, I've worked in the practice and, and, and constantly believe uh, within this uh, uh, change of uh, the, the practice that also there we have to um, adjust ourselves towards the way how we organize ourselves. And maybe you know that the uh, uh, UN studio was uh, uh, called before uh, Van Berkel and Bos. Uh, the reason why we turned into a, a united network organization, as we argued, was that we uh, believed that, that that collaboration and interactive cha exchange between uh, the people we worked with, and, and that you know already in the end of the 90s that were artists, uh, uh, that were uh, people f from many different fields uh, coming to the studio and where we collaborated with and, and slowly we, we discovered that the linear process of the design would have would not be so uh, yeah you know, would not be the best way of working within the profession so that's why we set up this uh, in 1999 the, uh, the network organization but if I look at your studio right now and, and maybe that's why I, I tilted the, the, the title and, and maybe mirrored it and, and rethink it in such a way that I now think constantly back of how we came to the title because or the, or the naming of the studio and, and the, the idea was also to, to bring in the, the un-studio in, so being not a studio and to be, to be also uh, like uh, if you think about the way how we often name ourselves as U, UNS uh, also in German, that might, maybe you know some of you, um, means uns, so we. So it's all about how we exchange information and how we uh, divert our information. But, but lately, uh, with, um, with, with the way how we have organized ourselves and the way how we've distributed our knowledge over the different aspects of uh, being active, uh, our infrastructure have has been always our fascination for the way how we have uh, 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 worked in, in, the, in, the, in the history of uh, human studio in the sense that we believe that if you know, like a building, to improve your own personal infrastructure of, of the way how you work in the relationship also towards the way how the offices or the company is organized, then, then what, what you discover is that you, when well, you do that well, that you might have much more time for design. Although, we, with, with all the locations where we are active, we have learned with the way how we inform, consultate, involve others, control the different uh, aspects of the, the latest techniques and the data where we work with. Uh, so the, 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 virtual, the virtual aspects of the work are, are of course not the only one. And, and maybe being responsible for the, the digital in architecture somewhere in the early 90s, and talking already quite early and, and designed already quite early with parametric design techniques, maybe our first projects on this level were already, uh, our first experiments were there to be found in 1995, 1996. Um, and referring a lot to the cultural aspect of the, of, of the profession, uh, as you know, the, the profession extended itself enormously. If we think about where we can refer to right now in, in architecture uh, in comparison to, let's say, two or three centuries ago, um, from fashion to which, you know, sciences on all the levels, um, or uh, think of uh, uh, the movie industry, um, product design, well, you can name it. Uh, that, that aspect of the cultural side of the profession has been expanded like unbelievable. But 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 uh, the other side, the side of the we call it the, the the efficiency model, or the I call it maybe sometimes I, maybe I call it a bit classical again, the science side of architecture, is is being similarly expanded. Uh, and I've I've noticed myself that 
that sometimes we overloaded ourselves with an enormous amount of cultural references and the rethinking of how the, the, the buildings could be experienced in not enormous amount of new ways and, and with new meanings and new interpretations. Uh, uh, lately, my interest is to balance these two out much more better, as you can see in the circular diagram. So I'm, I'm, I'm lately also highly fascinated in this inter interdisciplinary aspect of, of the profession. And, and, and in a way, I'd like recently also to reanalyze why it is so that, that some, of, some of the parts of the profession and the, and the expansion of the press profession has been so um, segmented and, and, and fragmented in the same time. Um, but as we all know, uh, if we go back to the 17th, 18th century, or even the, the beginning of the last century, uh, scientists and artists and, and, and writers uh, would all sit together and have their dialogue um, on, on particular topics of research they did and, and criticized each other. Like, for instance, this is, the, this is where, in the Salon in Vienna, um, where, where Freud would sit together with uh, uh, artists like Klimt, uh, Kokoschka, and, and maybe I think Egon Schiele uh, joined later as well, where where they were, I mean, for instance, these artists, they were criticizing constantly the work of, uh, of Freud. They were, they were not so fascinated in, of course they were fascinated in the theory, but they were not fascinated in the way how he translated some of his theories. And for instance, how, how, how the theory of Freud was actually translated in, 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 um, in the way how he saw, particularly, uh, for, for instance, uh, women. Um, but, you know, one of these uh, um, fascinations of me related to the, 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 the holistic side of the profession uh, comes also from looking back at these moments and, and maybe also particularly uh, reading, of, reading more about that history. And I, I don't know if you know The Age of the Insight. is a book by Kantler, a beautiful book of a neuroscientist who uh, goes back to his own personal history of Vienna where he learned all these uh, theories uh, of, of Freud, but also some of the artists he met. Like, um, like in this portrait, uh, the beauty of his argument is that Ego Schiele likes to try, uh, try to see very hard with the larger details of the body, like the hands, to, to get a communication across of an inside psychological effect of the, of the portrait uh, of, this, of, of himself in this case. Uh, and, and often the eyes and, and, and the way how the, 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 the head and the, the hands were portrayed in this sense uh, said a lot about how he um, yeah, liked to say something about himself. And in these years, uh, uh, looking at, at these aspects of the work, and, and again, sorry to go back to the, the, the art side of the, uh, the, the work, but, but I will talk about the other side as well later on, is the... Um, is the notion of the larger detail in architecture. I've always found it so fascinating uh, over the years to, to, to learn that it is so, so interesting to, to, to play with the idea of bigger details in architecture. That, that of course, you need a detail, the refinement of your, your um, delicate, uh, uh, sensual uh, elements in architecture there where it comes to the smaller detail. But I've always liked the idea that with two or three bigger details you could do, uh, you could do the whole work within, an, uh, for instance, in this case, a museum, like this ceiling uh, of, of a museum we did in uh, Nijmegen in Holland is, is guiding you constantly through the whole building. So it enters, you, or it guides you through the entrance to its the different, different levels to, to bring in different corners of the, of the building. So this is one of the larger details what guides you. There are two others uh, I, I, I am not going to explain right now, but similarly, like, for instance, with the Erasmus Bridge, uh, when already in a quite early phase, when we designed this project uh, in 1991, we, we developed our own 3D modeling program and uh, uh, developed an idea of how uh, this pro project could be in relationship to its interpretation of the, of the robustness of the city, like, the, 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 you know, Rotterdam is one of the most industrial cities of... Uh, of, of Holland, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's having an incredible hard history, with especially uh, being, being after the war almost totally bombed and being having, having almost no buildings there. It had a, a, ver a very enormous energetic uh, time afterwards to rebuild itself. And, and maybe the, the bridge 
referring with its with its articulation of the the public uh, uh, and political uh, history, um, referring more to the harbor and the cranes in the harbor. Uh, than, for instance, uh, any other type of interpretation people gave it. Uh, I, I don't want to give uh, millions of interpretations people gave it, but I mean, th this was my reading of the way how this, 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 this bridge needed to have that particular articulation. And we wanted to build it also in a particular way, like, like, um, like I told you about uh, the 3D modeling techniques. Uh, we were here quite early with new forms of uh, techniques to to bring this pylon on its uh, feet almost in one day uh, with a crane what had to, with the contractor come to the, the location and lifted this pylon up in, in its, uh, from a horizontal position in a vertical position and, and piled it onto its uh, feet, f yeah, like I said, in, in, in one day. But, but so design techniques, new design techniques, new rules of the way how you reinterpret uh, production techniques were already very early uh, there and fascinated us uh, uh, in the relationship also in the way how it could be linked up with the concept of the project or the, the interpretation of the urban uh, reading of the, uh, 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 the project. And then by finishing it uh, we wanted to uh, give it that these different readings as well like, like uh, uh, there was a major discussion about my, my fascination for Baby Blue, uh, where, where, where everyone said, yeah, no, why Baby Blue on a, such an infrastructure, large, uh, incredible, important uh, uh, image uh, of, of, of an icon of the city's uh, uh, bridge. Um, and then, and then uh, already here we, we arc articulated it so that we said, no, it's not so important to think of icons. Icons grow. Icons develop themselves over time. An icon cannot be designed um, uh, in one day. Um, that's why the, the color uh, 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 translates itself always into different colors. As we know, maybe, I don't know if you know that uh, history, but my, in my time, uh, in our family, uh, there was always used a little blue in the white in order to make the white whiter than white. So, so, so and, and this kind of effect of this light blue creates a condition where the light comes onto the panel, whereby sometimes the panel is totally white, and where sometimes with a more kind of grayish day, or with a particular evening light, the, 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 the pilot might almost disappear in the background of, uh, of, 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 the, of the, the sky, of uh, the surroundings of uh, the city. Uh, and similarly, with, with other kind of uh, forms of uh, uh, reflections on, on the way how we then work with these and then I mean the double notion of the reflection. In the work uh, has been, for instance, used in, in a project like this, um, uh, Villa and M, upstate New York, uh, whereby here a client, with, with a Russian client actually, uh, with an enormous uh, fascination for, for gold, um, uh, was actually, this idea was mirrored back into the facade and created constantly after images within the, uh, uh, the, the, the project, not only seen from the outside, but even when you're walking through the building itself. Like in the self-portrait you can see here of uh, Lucien Freud, uh, the building became a self-portrait of the owner and, and to be re-read not only by himself and, and re-interpreted, but also by the people who would visit the house. But, but um, uh, in the later work, like in the Mercedes-Benz Museum, as uh, Alicia mentioned, is what, what, we, what, we, what we learned is to, to bring these qualities, of course, to, to its spatial conditions and, and, and space-time conditions who were not uh, uh, modernistic in the, in the classical sense of like, you know, that, that, we, that you or we as an architect are the camera and then we, we walk in our space and everything is to experience almost two and a half D. And, and by moving around, you would uh, experience then always the frontal quality of uh, architecture. Here, I experimented in not for the first time, because it was actually already tested in many other buildings, but for, the, for, for, an, for maybe a, a, a quite more successful uh, time here in this project, we discovered th this idea that you could be in one space in the same time as being in the other space in, in another time. So it's, like, it's almost like if you have different time-space conditions in the same time. 
Um, so the, the building, uh, especially with this double helix, creates a condition that you sometimes can't really experience and see where you came from. Or if you see other people walk in the other helix, you might think, oh gosh, I've not seen that space before, so I have to go back towards it. So this kind of light confusion and this uh, play with modest uh, spatial uh, uh, conditions whereby uh, you, you, you uh, interpret them more in a kaleidoscopic manner is, uh, is a space-time effect where I've been always uh, uh, interested in spatially also, uh, sorry, especially also because of uh, the, um, uh, the relationship towards the, 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 the rationale to be found in the work, like, like maybe what I mentioned in the beginning, the science side of the work. So this notion of uh, discovering the, the, the absence in the work, or the, the, the playing with the idea of the absence, has been has been an, a fascination, or that what what you can slowly discover while you are are uh, uh, coming into a building like this, where you might th think when you look up in this building, you might think, oh, the building is having so many different qualities of skills. Uh, is it now is it now uh, 40 stories high, or is it only 12 stories high? And and then slowly while you are analyzing the different uh, layers within the building, you, you might, might discover the real uh, uh, spatial organizational effect of the building, but you have to, you have to discover it. Um, so this notion of how you can fill the, the non-existence with, with a particular kind of purpose, and, and by rereading it, what was also here tested in, an, uh, yeah, in a simple department store, but we gave a full new interpretation by treating it almost like a, a, a museum. And in the beginning, also here, the client was not so, uh, so enthusiastic about the idea because, I mean, what, what is a museum compared to an, uh, an, an, uh, a department store? And, and, and you know, what, what does it do to the public? But my argument was always that the kind of social proving is, is quite fascinating to work with, whereby people stay in a space and that they especially we know this from museums, that like, sometimes you might have a pe person to s standing next to a painting, might not even the most important painting maybe in the world, like this space might not be the most important space in the world, but, but, but this person looking at this painting might generate with two others or three others to attract other people to come closer to the painting and look at it as well. So this kind of condition of making public constructs having uh, had also, uh, uh, have, have been always uh, also, or fascination. So, this idea of the projective, the, the notion of the way how uh, we can confirm and, and, and play with a presence whereby it's not fully to, un to be understood while you step into the space in the first place, but that, uh, that it is again uh, uh, discovered. Um, but let me finish also that story about the hybridization of the, of the programmatic aspects of it. Because uh, you might think that we do that in a spatial organization, but also in a programmatic manner, we have learned that, that these aspects are giving you a, a full range of new uh, readings than, of course, than a, a classical identity you give to a program. So if you hybridize the identities, then, then of course it gives uh, far more different interpretations. Like here, Everything is white. The objects become far more important than, let's say, um, like like let's let's say if you would use uh, far more colors in the building. With the, with the whiteness, uh, also the whole idea of that the space become a kind of cat catwalk uh, uh, condition whereby you yourself and the objects are the most important in the uh, in the spatial uh, connection you can uh, make. Is um, is he also brought forth? And maybe here, again, a uh, fascination with, with, with an artist like Andy Warhol, who is an actually a fanatic shopper, uh, was a uh, link I, I made in that time for myself. Uh, and I, I even uh, used it to, towards the client. Uh, uh, there was a beautiful joke uh, whereby, for, for instance, Andy Warhol believed that it was only possible that, that people would, who die would end up in Bloomingdale's. You know, he he would believe that that a shopping center is is the the, the place to be uh, even after life. Um, anyway, if you're in a space, I don't understand why you don't uh, laugh at my Dutch Dutch jokes. <laughs> you know, it's I mean, it's a Dutch joke. You should. Yeah. Um, so, 
so, so, so maybe I'm going too fast. I will be slow, slow. <laughs> but so, but then when you are up and you look down, um, and this uh, this whole idea of uh, the, the, the 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 revealing of the building becomes then suddenly clear, and that that you then even maybe might not fully discover the program because you can see there are a lot of benches on the side and there are only cafes then slowly the program becomes clearer when you are walking inside the building. Also, this building is having many other programs to be combined within this department store, as forced almost by, by, by many advisors I worked with uh, to make it possible also to bring, as we know, people up to a 12-story or 14-story high building, what is unusual for shopping, as you know. I mean, here in Europe we think that it is even impossible to... To, to make a three or four story uh, 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 high uh, a department store. Anyway, this idea of the revealing uh, aspect of, of the, the program, whereby, like in this, for instance, project we did in Graz, um, in, in Austria, where this uh, uh, music school uh, reveals itself towards the outside only in the night. During the day, the facade is totally closed, and it's almost like if you can't see anything of the interior of that building. But but during the the night, suddenly you can see the the um, almost the articulation of the the musical experience to be found and seen at the entrance area, but uh, can be uh, listened to later when you enter when you enter the theater, as you can see in this building uh, or in this entrance uh, part of the building. Um, but but key was here also new techniques of uh, working. We we applied a new uh, pouring of the concrete here. What is not what was not uh, used top down, but was more used in a bottom up uh, strategy, so that we could all uh, get the concrete surfaces on the lower part of the edges of the concrete as as uh, as smooth as possible. And as you probably know, uh, with concrete, what is the most difficult thing is uh, to not get these gravel uh, uh, edges on the on the uh, on the on the uh, ends of the uh, services or in a latest uh, project in, in a villa we are uh, right now fin finishing <coughs> in uh, in Holland a similar kind of idea here with with uh, the the repetition of of uh, uh, uniform uh, elements uh, but then articulated in different manner and creating uh, sometimes a closed and an open or ventilated area within the building. Are the experiments we, we uh, from a smaller to the large detail, we are uh, uh, fascinated in uh, there where, where it gives uh, different readings of the building. But, but maybe as you know as well, uh, is that uh, with, with over the years we have uh, used always the pavilions, and then I'm talking about the last six to seven years, we use the pavilions as a, as a thought model, as a prototypical model to test our ideas in. And, and often we see these pavilions for the way how we can reverse engineer them towards the, the, the other work we get out of this work or uh, further develop out of this work. Um, so this idea of that you make uh, an exception that you that you pr promote your own work with an with an form of subsidizing it all because I mean these these pavilions are often not so, uh, fully paid for the, we, we produce them often by ourselves and we we, ve we invest constantly in order to to do our own work through these pavilions in order to learn more about how for instance we could work with more more complex mathematical services who on the, on the one hand look complex, but they are quite uh, effective in the architectural uh, uh, ingredients uh, uh, we work with. Like, uh, maybe you know that, I mean, it started already with the Möbius house. If you cross your arms and, and, and make a Möbius with a piece of paper, or, or like I said, with your arm, is then, then it incorporates very easy a lot of architectural qualities, like, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the paper can hold, support itself, so it can incorporate infrastructure, it can play with the notion of the distribution of programmatic effects, etc. And similarly here, we, uh, with different types of ciphered services, as they call it so nicely in uh, mathematics, we're tested here in order to hold the construction up for this uh, pavilion. 
And of course, uh, it was in the Millennium Square, a pavilion in a public space where uh, the, the public construct where I talked about before became a very active, uh, uh, um, interactive uh, 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 game with, with the pavilion, or de developed a lot of interactive games with the pavilion in the night specifically, uh, with, with uh, the people who uh, uh, gave all kinds of performances or lessons or uh, uh, um, um, yeah, music performances, m maybe for instance uh, in this pavilion in the night. But the diagonal spatial effect was an, an, an aspect we were also after. Maybe you can, of course, refer to a lot of history, a lot of wonderful histories we can find in Chicago here. Uh, from 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 the work of uh, from from the raising of the ground in the work of Frank Lloyd Wright towards Mies, but 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 an aspect I was very fascinated in was particularly the the diagonal effects of the the urban plan of uh, Burnham, and it's also in the in the celebration of Burnham that this uh, pavilion was was, uh, was made, uh, we introduced more in the sectional uh, effect these diagonal uh, readings. <coughs> but again, like I said, then later translated and transformed into to, to, uh, the works we uh, distorted out, uh, out of these pavilions. Like this is a house we did uh, in Stuttgart, where, where the game of the parallax view between the landscape and the house was tested, where, where almost an echoing back of that what you would experience in the landscape was brought back into the experience of the house. So it's almost like that you not see a parallax view alone, but also that you introduce a parallax experience. Um, and this parallax uh, idea, uh, maybe I explained it a bit in the Möbius uh, house, but also particularly in the Mercedes-Benz Museum, that where you play with double readings and double movements, double infrastructure, that was actually further expanded in, uh, also within this uh, house. I played a lot with the notion also of the twist, the way how the, 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 the house twists itself open towards the, the higher view of the, of, the, of the hill, the wine hill, on this side of Stuttgart, and, and there where it closes itself down and introduces another program like you can see here on, this, on the first level where, where all the sleeping rooms are. Um, there, there on the ground floor, uh, there, was, there was not a particular kind of reason to make an, an, a more higher a connection, a diagonal connection with the landscape outside uh, the house. So this switching on and off of, of different external values and internal regulations of the way how you work with the architecture or do, do work with, the, with also the forces of, of um, yeah, the way how we can uh, uh, then and hybridize these forces and bring them together is, uh, is the fascination where uh, where I come back to later uh, as well. Uh, but, but again, um, the pavilions, uh, 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 the influence on the pavilions uh, was uh, particularly here uh, also tested in an exhibition, maybe here clearly with this parallax view also, like you see sometimes in this exhibition, it was my first uh, uh, exhibition in Harvard when I, uh, when I entered the, the university uh, uh, for my uh, Kenzo Tange chair a year ago. And, and when you come into this corridor-like space, you, 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 you view the objects of the pavilions in a kind of whole, uh, an whole manner. But if you step out of the image, then it's, uh, disappearing into a series of fragments and, and uh, disappears in, 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 the, in a uh, layer of uh, uh, an other corner of the space. But even the furniture or the smaller scale projects we do have uh, had an influence on, on for instance, the, the development of a pavilion like this, um, like this latest uh, sit table, as we call it, um, a table where you can sit in and, and, and becomes uh, quite successful lately simply because the younger companies, uh, especially the startup companies you all know, they are interested in not buying too many furniture anymore lately. They are happy with one furniture. And uh, when, when, when there is one furniture, they argue, they can uh, always move it and, and take it with them to another space, so that, that the furniture in this sense uh, becomes also almost a kind of space in itself and a workplace in itself for the company to, uh, uh, to work with. 
So this whole history of the, the development of the diagram and the, and, the, and, the, and the quality of the design model and, and maybe the latest prototype uh, example as, as we have mentioned in the, uh, and we work, work with so often in the, in the pavilion, has been also connected to the idea of how we moved from a network practice to a more knowledge uh, practice. We, we, we believe far more in, uh, in a latest development, what we can find in, in many other uh, fields, is uh, in co-creation. Uh, and that doesn't mean that I'm not there. Uh, of course, uh, if, if we are um, interactive with the knowledge we exchange with each other and our specialists we work with together, then of course uh, this interactiveness is guided. Uh, by me, but 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 I've always said I like to be more like a John Cage standing in the middle of the orchestra, and and directing towards many directions, instead of standing in front of the orchestra and saying you know this is the design and this is how you have to develop it and this is how you have to build it. Uh, from from all these different principles <coughs> and and models, we have learned to 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 work with the actors in the network more specifically than only working with the architects alone. And, and now, maybe fr from this slide onwards, I'd like to explain where I think that, that we, we shift or practice slowly into a new direction. And it is that, that with, within the kind of different ambitions of the scales we work with, we have learned uh, that, that that what is not the physical aspect of architecture, but maybe I called it before also the absence of architecture, or I call it the invisible side or the environmental qualities of architecture, is that, that there is so much to be still to be discovered in there that, um, that we do, do a lot of research in, that, uh, in this latest uh, uh, aspect of the work. Like this uh, tornado you see in the Mercedes-Benz Museum was already an invention of a group of engineers who worked with me in order to make sure that we didn't have to compartmentalize the building. So we didn't compartmentalize all the different open spaces in the building uh, with a smoke detector, what in five minutes could suck out all the smoke within the building. And, and, and this is done by a circular movement of uh, air blown into the space and then uh, yeah, uh, uh, moved into this tornado out of the building. Um, so so this, was, this was a real invention. There were, uh, uh, we could actually, with this, reduce down almost 15% of the materials in the building and, and, and building cost uh, reduction of almost 10% was introduced here. Um, and, and maybe with this slide, uh, or the left, uh, for you, the yeah, left-hand side of the slide, uh, I'd like to also explain that, that there is a history, of course, in our work, whereby we have looked at these different aspects of the face, and the way how the face can have so many different interpretations and readings. But the most important is uh, that what we know from this minimal produced uh, so in 1999 by an artist called David Lee, that, that here the seams disappeared in the face where the man, the lion and the snake came together. And, and that the integral overlapping of the, the going be beyond the collage was possible in architecture but also in art was, was actually something I further wanted to extend in, in that what is maybe not present in architecture. That was not so clearly visible. Um, like, for instance, in this twist of the Mercedes-Benz Museum, you might think it is only a constructive element what, what carries an, an ex expanded floor of, of almost 33 meters and creates this wonderful view uh, towards different levels of the building, it makes this complex uh, 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 public construct, again, between the qualities of the way, the way how you can see the different people move within the building, is is maybe suggesting that it does only one thing, but it does almost three to four things. Or the, the uh, concrete core activation in the building, whereby you can heat up the concrete only for three hours in the morning and then keep the building for the whole day warm, is a is you know, building technique we, we're getting slowly in the profession, but it is very slowly, whereas I've proven with so many buildings right now, maybe built uh, uh, concrete core activation buildings now, mm, yeah, so, so around, maybe so around 10 of them in, in, in the world, and I've learned that, um, that it can reduce an enormous amount of uh, um, energy, not alone, but also, uh, like I said, uh, building cost. Um, but you have to know how to use the techniques. Um, it's one of my favorite pictures, 
because uh, in the time when we did the Mercedes-Benz building, we had to also be finished in a, in a very uh, compact time and work with such a complex series of techniques. Like uh, in that time, uh, we had no scripting techniques yet. In 2006, there was no cross software yet. We also here uh, developed our own programming techniques and um, were able to uh, adjust close to 200 changes, sometimes in two days. So, so uh, and then adapt the 3D model uh, and, and resend the model to its all the different, uh, 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 to the different uh, subcontractors in the whole project. So, so when the client discovered that, uh, they said that the management work was not doing the work, that we were more, more managing the work, the project, than the managers. Uh, because we were so quickly communicating with all the different parties. And with this we could even speed up more uh, the process of uh, the building. Um, and this is another aspect of there where I believe in is, is a form of quickness. Quickness not in a, in a commercial sense, not quickness in the sense of how to do more and more and more. I'm not talking about ex the expanding aspect of that what you produce, but I'm more talking about how through a form of quickness can also uh, apply a series of techniques who are not able to do when you are introducing kind of form of uh, slow cooking in, in, uh, in, in architecture. And, and you, uh, of course, uh, every, every creative process needs a particular cooking time, as we know. Um, but but uh, I've learned that, uh, that uh, with new techniques, uh, especially with the latest techniques, we have only programmers right now in the office, uh, who can do this work, uh, we, we are uh, also very uh, clear and more efficient in the infrastructure of how we communicate to all the different parties. And this is what I'd like to uh, also emphasize, is that with these large details where I talked about in the beginning of the talk, uh, in the work, you can also apply that to even more complex buildings, like, like for instance, we did here in the Mercedes-Benz building. The twist came also back, only back, four times. And the way how we played with the columns uh, was so that, that in a kind of almost mechanical objectivity um, we, we learned that it was possible that these columns needed to be angled in, in such a manner that, that they could be produced very quickly and also uh, be uh, smoothly uh, whereby in, in the chains of the uh, mechanical organizational quality of the production of the work, like the mechanical process of the design, we, we create an enormous amount of freedom Welcome. <laughs> You're taking the wrong door. So in this, so in this mechanical uh, 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 development of the columns, we were then able to, with almost uh, 600 changes within the angles of the columns, we could, were able to, to cut them in such a manner that they could produce in, in, the, in, the, in the quickest way. And of course, I mean, I could explain a lot about the concept of the building, but I've done too many times. But, but only one last thing I would like to say about it is, and, and maybe I, it's not the, the, the edge I would like to give to the talk too much, is that in the beginning, of course, the client was very critical of uh, concrete because it was so boldly there and, and argued uh, with us uh, if it was not possible to to paint it here and there a little more, you know, to give it a bit of soft Mercedes uh, uh, reading. Uh, but we uh, then, when we when the building was under construction, we uh, we introduced some uh, nice shiny cars in the building, and then argued, of course, uh, the reference to it's the context of uh, Stuttgart, that 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 the the city with all the work of Slyk, all the bridges and the tunnels, in concrete are of course the infrastructure of there where the car has been always. Uh, connected to. So the, br the building is almost like a large bridge. It's one kind of big infrastructural element where you can walk through. And this industrial effect, similarly uh, wh where I talked about in, in, in uh, Rotterdam, is also to be seen here. This, this building is uh, partly a machine of the further extension of the factories next to the, uh, to the company. So, as I said, the increase of the different skills of participation and the way how we collaborate lately is with, 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 with such a series of techniques that we now believe that that, that exchange of knowledge between the different parties in the, in, the, in, in the profession, and that could be also the different participants on the side of the client, because I mean, a client is not coming alone anymore to the, 
to the table, as you maybe also know. Today, a client often comes, like with Mercedes, I had close to 40 people from the client side on the table who, with all their own specialism, who wanted to talk with us about the, the, the way how certain knowledge had to be uh, implemented in the design. And in earlier phases, uh, maybe this diagram uh, is also quite known, is, uh, you know, whereby uh, the, 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 the whole development of bringing information in a complex manner together, we call it the eight-dimensional diagram, whereby the way how accessibility in the city or publicness on the site or time in the location might be connected to its people uh, who in different user groups use the location in a different manner than we are looking normally at the location, gave us new insights in the way how to read uh, locations. Um, so, so what I'm saying is that these new collaborative techniques are changing in scale and, 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 and the tools of collaborations are particularly changing. So starting as a cooperative uh, uh, closed company in the beginning, so in, and I'm talking really about the late 80s, 89, where we started with Van Berkel and Bos, we turned into collaborative organization and maybe we slowly turned into a co-creative organization whereby the closed innovation is not anymore there. We don't do anything at home anymore. We, we are totally open, uh, work with many other companies and, and exchange our knowledge so that we even want to, uh, in the beginning of next year, somewhere in March, we would like to go with some of our information, all of, some of our uh, knowledge platform information, we'd like to go online. Um, so, so the knowledge platforms, uh, and I, I'm not going through the details of these knowledge platforms, they are related to, to all the people in the office. Nobody's anymore, no specialist, so you're always a specialist in the organization if you're interested in topics around attainable and, or sustainable uh, ideas or new materials or new programming techniques or in geometry, then you might always step into one of these uh, 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 knowledge communities uh, whereby we share our information with, with, with other parties through the debate conferences, of course, but also through education and the way how we connect ourselves to the rest of the world. Um, so we, we believe that design turns slowly into a new knowledge uh, 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 platform whereby you, you train yourself more to judge on another level. So you, you, yeah, you can talk more about trained judgment as, as a form of design where the reading of visual language of, of the different techniques we use is important but also particularly in the way how we integrate it towards the way how we formulate and articulate our buildings. Like in this project where the facade is totally uh, used on many levels. Uh, I'm not again going through all the refinements here, but 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 uh, through uh, photogenetic uh, cells, the way how we compartmentalize the air coming into the building, and, and the way how the floors are um, are tilted a little bit and bring direct air uh, from the outside into the the spaces and is sucked out uh, through the ceiling, like um, techniques who are used also in hospitals, like in operation rooms are used uh, within this design uh, in order to make uh, buildings far more uh, um, uh, yeah, healthy. Um, and these, these techniques whereby um, the latest uh, of, of a, a facade like this uh, are now possible, were not uh, possible maybe before, but be before we might do a fantastic geometry and, and introduce an articulation of an attainable architecture, but in the same time, that it is then also responsive and that it is uh, flexible and that it creates a kind of uh, what, I, what I of course uh, like uh, lately a lot in, in, in the way how we can apply it to a kind of form of social sustainability is, uh, uh, is uh, further developed in the work. I'd like to finish with this project and that is um, an, um, a project I did for uh, the Frauenhof Institute in, uh, in Stuttgart. Um, uh, it is a uh, it's a virtual uh, engineering uh, company. They do a lot of research for different cities um, to analyze the the the, the, the complexity of uh, obstacles they have in the city on men, yeah on on level of uh, crime, uh, sustainable topics, etc. But but 
Here, with this client, we learned to, to make uh, projects so that they are not so easy to be seen as, an, as a program as we have been uh, pointing at before towards a building. Like this, this could be called an office building, but it is not. It's more a center. The, the office spaces are called uh, laboratoriums. All the different uh, programs to be combined in this space were linked towards the central core of the building where everyone could meet. So in this building, we hide it almost every elevator. Nobody can find an elevator. You have to walk everything through the building. So you would always meet and collaborate within this uh, project. So the digital production from there where creative pro processes and presentations were combined were all linked to the central core of the building. Um, so as you can see here in the, in the, I don't know if this is a laser point, yes. So if you can see here these laboratory spaces, the visual links and the, and the higher and uh, more interactive spaces were so connected through its uh, atrium that, that we uh, made a kind of circular space. You can see here how uh, still, uh, luckily enough, we use, sometimes use the paper. Uh, we do, don't do everything in digital. But, but you, you, you can see that here with the folding of the paper, we fold the floors all on top of each other and test it quickly if the programs, because there are so many complex questions in the program, we could create an, an enormous amount of flexibility whereby the building could adjust itself uh, easily over time. And this notion of flexibility is another topic I'd like to bring forward because we have, for instance, in Holland at the moment close to, uh, in Amsterdam maybe for instance, we have uh, uh, six million empty uh, uh, square meter of office spaces who, can't, who are not used at the moment, totally not used. They were all speculative projects and these projects cannot be so easily turned into housing or whatever. So most of our latest clients, not only in Holland, but they ask us how can we play with this flexibility. So what we do now, most of our projects, they have the opportunity uh, within the layouts we design to be turned into housing. So, so um, or the other way around. So if you have housing, they can be turned into uh, offices or uh, other spaces. And this building particularly, uh, the, the request here was to make it as flexible as possible so that the building could be used in many different manners in the future as possible. So here you see the central core of the building whereby the walking through the space is highly important and, and, and inter, uh, creates a lot of interaction between the, the people who work there. So reducing weight was another aspect of the um, creation of the large spans. So, so the, so, so so when we have talked before, like in a project, like, like for instance in Mercedes or in the Arnhem train station or in uh, even the houses, the column-free spaces have been always an ambition to work with in order to make that flexibility work. And here we constantly tested that, how, how we could make through the central core also the, 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 the building uh, stable and, and make the, the, the laboratorium spaces as open and, and column-free as possible. The color was used in order to create a kind of form of uh, uh, wayfinding so that you would know always to which laboratorium to move in the building. And, and through what I call more lately not sustainability, but uh, like I said, maybe more attainability or an active sustainability through mass material efficiency, we constantly test if things are to be reduced. So to, to make the, the, the efficiency of the materials so compact in its organization so that you would have always the most ultimate or the, the minimum, I would better say, uh, material to be used in, the, in, in, for instance, the facade in this case. Well, uh, the key is that I, with this, like to say that, that, that if we maybe think about this notion of trained judgment and the scientific self of, of the further development of the work, um, then it's maybe that what we always did as architects to play with this notion of the way how through the hand, uh, the eye and the mind, we learn. And this, this learning, this classical learning of producing and developing new ideas and innovate, this, this is a form of urgency we don't know so very well in the profession. We find it in medicine, maybe. In medicine, every day you need to almost invent. 
because a new vaccine needs to be found for a form of illness. But where is this urgency to be found in architecture? So, but maybe as, maybe as someone like Freud would say, in a kind of form of oceanic feeling in the way how you learn through the unpredictable, so that you sometimes don't know where you go to in the process of design and, and through a form of operative, critic, uh, operative and a critical quality, sorry, in criticality, we believe that it is so important to uh, think as an architect whereby the architecture becomes a kind of objectivist and a structural objectivist whereby you learn to be more open towards the experiment and produce through, through the production of the work, uh, yeah, through the production of the work that you dare uh, 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 invent, that, that research doesn't separate itself from the, from the work itself. Thank you very much.
young, the young web entrepreneurs. And uh, it's, it's uh, standing for creative leadership in, in this new entrepreneurial world where your, your generation is setting up already companies in school. And um, I've been teaching there several times now, and I've, I've been discovering, they call them the participants of the school, not any more students, it's a holding concept. I discovered there that there are already guys walking around, 28 years old, they, they bring searches, hard searches together. This, guy, this person is studying medicine, and uh, he found a new heart, uh, open heart, uh, um, Operation technique uh, with several researchers, and he he um, he argues that he can save uh, within his goal close to 20,000 people a year, and he proved that already through a uh, uh, series of operations he he was part of himself. But what is the most amazing is that he, uh, apart from that, it is a non-profit organization that is so much you know, so much cool in a way. Um, Sometimes I think we are not aware of these new developments in architecture. I think we are still, you know, we, we are all coming out of the, the iPhone phase. We all have an iPhone. We world outside in our field, still in the Walkman phase. Oh, you produce a kind of expression in your work. 
And I let students more think about how organizational strategies in the innovative, in the innovative uh, economy where we are maybe not fully aware of, because there is already an innovative economy happening, but it is a little bit somewhere under the cover. <coughs> Um, that they look more to that world and, and look from that world to rethink organizational strategies in architecture. I think that's where, where I think uh, maybe the future is to fund in architecture, to, 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 yeah, to learn to play with critical knowledge, like what was said. So critical knowledge is what I really is for the, the way how, how the future architecture is going to be more designed. So, 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 so. I call it trained judgment. If you know how to combine knowledge, how, how to cross-combine new techniques, the design, and the production of design, that that is the most important. Let's have one more question. Maybe it's my question. Do you think, uh, my question comes in two parts. Um, do you think any of your work would have been possible if it wasn't for this new information age we're living in? And the second part is, um, do you have any hopes or aspirations or words of advice for us new generations who are native to this new information age? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, in a way you answered it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, you're part of the generation, you know how to use these techniques. You, you are one who is the most, you are the greatest, I, I'm actually learning every day. Uh, how, how fast this, this, this age is moving, you know, this, this particular age of the way how we can learn more about how to cross-combine information. That's why I maybe talk also about you know, how to cross-combine information. Um, so so design, design in the future is going to be, and maybe I'm, I'm not so clear to you, but I'm also saying is that, that architecture should be in the future far more responsible. If you look at all these young companies right now, they're not talking only about the way how they can, can earn money. It's not anymore about the production of making money. You know, making money in architecture is also for I'm talking now about the uh, client. You know, making money in architecture is not going to be uh, the future anymore. The way how you can generate a far more interesting future for architecture is there where you, you take a, a strong responsible uh, position. You know, you have to take position. So it's more interesting political and cultural qualities of the development of uh, the profession. That's, that's, and, and you often you find in, this, in the world of uh, younger companies, who are so innovative, you can find there a similar kind of uh, attitude. You know, not in the first years people will make uh, so important much money. They, they find their subsidies, but the most important is that they, they take a standpoint. So now we invite you all to migrate to the debate house for the book launch of the Edward Benjamin and some